Alright, um, we're back with another uh, care video, essentially. Uh, this time it's for uh, the Simandoa Conciferium, the extinct roach, or the Simandoa cave roach. Um, whatever floats your boat, really. The roaches don't really care what you call them. Um, these are a really cool species from Guinea, Africa. Or, I should say, they used to be from Guinea, Africa. Um, there's a kind of a bittersweet story with uh, this particular species. Um, basically, uh, some entomologists doing a uh, basically like a field study and kind of seeing what's in the region, and they went into the uh, Simandoa caves in the Simandoa region of Guinea, Africa, and uh, they found these roaches there, and they took a whole bunch back. Um, to study them and whatnot, and then they came back a few years later, and the caves were all destroyed um, for bauxite mining. And uh, and as a result, um, they are now extinct in the wild, since that cave system is the only place where they could be found. Um, so they are kept alive in captivity by roach hobbyists such as myself and you know others who keep these. Um, I'll show you their tub. Take off the macro lens real quick. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, generic pot leaf fake plant. Need that, as always. Um, the substrate is mostly peat moss with a little bit of cocoa fiber, some organic topsoil. Um, but it's mostly peat moss just to hold moisture. These guys like it um, fairly moist. Not like super damp, but you know it should never be dry. Um, lots of deciduous leaves in here. That's a big part of their diet. I actually got to replace the leaves um, pretty soon or get more because they've cleared them out. This used to be covered in leaves and they've, uh, they've munched them all down. Um, this is a live bearing species, so they do not lay oots, which is convenient. Um, they are a, I would say a medium on the scale of reproduction speed and amount and how quickly they mature um, you can get a turnaround of these guys in about a year it's nothing crazy like domino roaches which you have to wait like two years just for the nymphs to mature and like six months for the oots to hatch not with these um, although they don't have huge huge litters you're looking at maybe like 15 or so um, maybe a little bit more um, per litter and they'll have one every like two or three months um, the females anyways um, this is a climbing species. Um, they do have wings, but they can't really fly, or um, rather, I've never seen them fly. Um, so, not a uh, really huge concern there, but I would definitely uh, get a uh, gasket tub or, you know, some sort of, like, insect barrier or something if you want to keep these. You don't want them. They tend to scurry and burrow. They don't really fly out of the cage, like gyna or banana roaches or something like that. So they're actually not that bad to house. There's a male over here. Um, they spend most of their time burrowed, like almost all of their time, um, underneath. They do have very interesting, um, oh, there's a random red runner in there. They have an interesting kind of social hierarchy. Um, females are dominant, and they kind of command certain areas of the tub. Um, this is not a species that enjoys crowding. They need a lot of space, so if you get too many, you definitely want to um, up their size or separate out and start a new colony or something like that. This is one of the nymphs. Cute little guys. Um, they get actually really vibrant colors um, when they get a little bit bigger than this. They get like nice orange and black stripes or yellow and black, you know. This isn't the best lighting, um, to be honest. I'm filming at night. I wish I had better lighting. Uh, maybe I'll do a video of them in the day, and I'll show you like a little bit better of what they look like. Or you know, you can look on my uh, my Facebook and my business page, and you can find um, decent pictures of them there. Ah, uh, yes. There's a couple babies. Um, I keep one big uh, Hissa roach in here, just cause. He's the only normal Hissa I have. I have other Hissa species, but he's the only regular Oblongonota that I have. Or, um, sorry, 
poor Terry that I have, and he just lives in here. He doesn't bother nobody. Or she, I think it's a girl. Yeah, it's a girl. She doesn't bother anybody. But, uh, yeah. Uh, most of their diet is the leaves. They also really enjoy squash and pumpkin. Um, the occasional piece of dog food or cat food or fish food. They're not terribly picky at all. They like it on the warmer side in the high 80s, early, uh, low 90s. Um, like I said, I mean, you don't really need to moist, uh, mist them. They like high humidity, but keeping the substrate damp is enough since they mostly live on the substrate. I give them pieces of, uh, coconut bark, or sorry, palm bark to hide under. They seem to like that a lot. But, uh, yeah, very simple species to keep. Um, really rewarding. I suggest that anybody in the hobby, uh, get some of these. Just to kind of, you know, I guess, keep them alive, you know? It's really cool. They have, um, these really cool stripes on the back. It's not showing up well on camera. Um... But it's a really nice kind of like yellowy orange color and then of course they've got their iconic head plate which is black and white very cool species um, so yeah that's about it um, if you have any other suggestions for care videos or anything you want to see feel free to let me know um, I have one more I'm gonna do one on Kluge and that'll be it for the week um, I probably won't do more until like right before the expo or um, or maybe I'll just do the video of the expo, and that'll be my video for for next week or the week after. Um, speaking of which, come out to the Reptile Expo, the NorCal Reptile Expo, in San Mateo on November 10th and 11th. I'll be there with some of these guys for sale and a bunch of other inverts. Um, the company's called Cycloptic Exotics, so you can come and check us out. But uh, yeah, have a good night, guys.